Welcome back Javas. This is a screencast that is a companion to Chunk 1, Module 2 for Java. And the title of Module 2 is Loading External Classes in NetBeans. What we mean by external class is a class that you didn't write that you want to be able to use in your code. Now most of the code that you can find is licensed for reuse. All of the code that's published for my class you can reuse. Now we don't want to reuse it as a substitute for doing your own thinking because that will turn your brain to mush, but we can use that code as a launching point or a practice tool for learning Java. And the location in which our code exists for the class is on a online repository called GitHub. You can see on exercise one, the first step gives you a link to GitHub. It will open in a new tab. Let's look at GitHub for a moment. I'm going to zoom in. So GitHub is like a file manager for computer code. And our repository, as it's called, is guess of, uh, what it's called, Java CIT 111. And throughout the course, I will be giving you references to directories within the CIT 111 NetBeans project. And I'm going to navigate into that even though I gave you the link directly into the proper directory. So you'll notice, uh, take some time to click through it. All of this is open source, it's online, you do not need to log in to get it. And uh, my code that I want to run in NetBeans is in the, under source, and then components, and then uh, I'm actually going to be in language structures. Oh, excuse me, I don't remember where I'm going. Let's reopen that from our, uh, our guide. So loading classes, GitHub repository. This was under source. Oh, uh, that was a link to the general overview. You can see all of that. Now we specifically want to load this program. This program is a class called Quality Control. This was a program that we'll use later in the course, but I want to give you the chance to see that you can uh, transfer even complicated code like this this uh, program into NetBeans so you can tinker with it. Now you'll notice that when you pull it up in GitHub you can see the source code right here. This is Java but you can't run it in NetBeans. This is just a display from a web browser. So we need to find a way to get it into NetBeans which is our run environment. You'll notice the first thing we need to do is create the container inside NetBeans that we are going to put the code we're getting from the internet and in order to create a properly named file inside NetBeans we need to read the code that we're trying to move over and determine the name of the class. That's easy to find since it's following the words public and class. In this case it's quality control. So we need to come to NetBeans and we need to create a class file called quality control. I would suggest even copying this so I can select it in GitHub, right-click, copy, or Control-C, so I can be sure to have the identical file name. Now I'm going to make a new project, and I'm going to call this project uh, Java, uh, I'm going to call it Application Practice, or Transfer Practice, and I need to call it Transfer Practice 1 since I've already done this exercise for myself. And I'm going to finish it, so now I have a project I'm going to make a default package called practice and I'm going to make a class file in here. This is where I have to be careful. This is the container I'm going to move the code into. So I'm going to name the class exactly what it is in NetBeans. Notice that I pasted that in. So I used control and V for paste. I'm going to check it's in package practice and now I can hit finish. NetBeans defaults when you create a class to giving you the package name. So notice over here, the name of my package is practice. That's very close. And it automatically placed it in my source code over here. So that's handy. Now we want to preserve that package name. If we jump back to GitHub, notice the package for this file is this long nested package because I use packages to organize the entire class's code and I have to use directories and subdirectories. 
In other words, I do not want to use this line of code. This is the only line of code from this file that I don't want to move over. All right. Now one option is to select everything except the package, but that's not very handy because we want every other line of code and the chance that you're going to miss a closing curly brace by selecting everything is actually quite high. I've seen it a thousand times. So one strategy is to hit the raw button over here which will open my file in a its own window and it only has the text of this file. That allows me to hold down control and tap A for select all and then hold down control and tap C for copy and now I'm ready to move this whole chunk of code lock stock and barrel over to NetBeans and now I have a package practice that I want to preserve the declaration of the class quality control is already in the code that I'm pasting so I don't want to um, I, I don't need what was generated by NetBeans automatically so I'm gonna select it hit backspace to delete it now I'm ready to paste in the code with control tap V and I see I have nice code moved over even the ind indentation stayed with me thank goodness the only problem is I moved that package declaration over from github I'm gonna select it and backspace it to delete it and I need to save the file with the control s you'll notice that my uh, m my transfer worked because I have a compilable class and so I can test this now I'm going to I'm going to read this code a little bit. Start by reading the comment before the class. What am I about to run? This is a simulation program. It simulates a process control mechanism. And it's a clever little class because it uses a random number generator to simulate the some sort of measurement of unit quality. And then I use logic in Java to test that uh, simulated quality against a standard. So in this case I'm scoring a quality uh, between 0 and 100 and the threshold is 65 so if the random number generator gives me a number over 65 I want to declare that uh, digital unit uh, uh, passing quality test anything under is not so I am going to run that 10,000 times by default for this exercise, I'm going to run it 100 times. So Control S. Now I can go to Run, Run File, and woof! Look at that. So this is a cool program because it actually uh, is doing a repetitive action with random numbers 100 times, and does it really fast. So I'm getting a printout of each test that it did. You'll notice I can see this is uh, test number one and it passed because the random number generator gave us 90 which is over 65 and the code gives me a final output of the tests at the very end I'm scrolling down product production summary I tested 100 units and 0.59 were quality uh, pass that's about 50 that is 59 percent so we have just successfully moved code from github over to NetBeans and run it and this allows you to tinker with it so come in here change the number of units look I'll do it 10,000 times see how long that takes shift F6 takes a little while but I had a 63 percent pass rate you can get rambunctious 100,000 tests and this might have to run for a little while there's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6 uh, and then it um, jumped all the way at the end. So I was still at about 64% of my uh, units passed. Now we'd approach that uh, we, if, if the random number was generating numbers uh, evenly across the distribution we would expect the uh, quality threshold to be approximately equal to the failure ratio. So I can test it again and see if it's close to 65. There we go, we are at 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 100,000 units and it was 63 percent so we can see some interesting randomization there so that concludes week number two screencasts and have fun with Java